Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration and Crestorio 2 where I've been making further strides in attempting to get one single shiny Naquium ingot prepared. <laughs> so without further ado, let's dive in and see what's new this week. So, as you can see here, I've expanded the spaceport over Talos, so in the, up in Talorbit. So we had the original one over here. This was the this is the ship that takes um, beryllium back and forth back to the uh, back to Norbit. And interestingly, the ship has turned up now. So because I've been saying that we I want to use more beryllium because we seem to be a bit. We seem to have a bit of an excess of it over in Norvis, uh, and that meant that we weren't really getting through it over here, so all the machinery had fallen asleep, and that meant that the train wasn't running round and round, and that meant the sulphur wasn't getting taken down, and so the machinery had all cut, shut down, and oh, it's, a, it's all a whole thing, but basically that meant that we there, there, were, there were issues down there that would, would be at least partially solved by having the system kick in and start running a little bit. Now it's come over here, it's picked up um, two thirds of a spaceship already, which is quite impressive. Uh, and it looks like there hasn't been a train coming round since. In fact, let's have a quick look down at the other end of here. Yeah, so the, the, there is a train down here that is sitting here going, hmm, I wonder if I should leave. And actually it really should be leaving because we should see, yeah, this, this, this has not worked. So that is supposed to trigger when there is a shortage of sulphur down here um, and tell the ship to leave. And it doesn't seem to have done, so I'm going to need to look into that next time and find out why why the train is still there. It should be going, oh, there's no sulphur down here, but there is some up in space. I'll go and get it. Presumably I've broken a cable somewhere or got my logic wrong or something like that, so we'll need to take a look at that. But anyway, that's kind of irrelevant because at the moment we don't really, we don't care so much about the beryllium. What we care about is the Naquium over here. And so we've had a couple of runs from the uh, from the long-range Naquium ship. So it lands here, it unloads all of its uh, crushed Naquitite, and optionally also some methane ice. And now I haven't set up a system to request this yet, but it's already but it's set up currently as there is a way, there is a place for it to be unloaded. At the moment, we're just bringing the uh, the methane ice over from um, from Norvis, where it's being stockpiled by Mark from from the uh, Vitamiland processing, which is a bit of a convoluted way of producing it. But uh, but we have it as an overflow, and therefore we need to use it up somewhere. And this seems like a good a place as any because we will get through quite a lot of it there. So yes, the interstellar ship will fly out to Stardust. It will load up on crushed Naquitite there. In fact, there it is on its way out. It's going out to get some more crushed Naquitite if we look out here. Then I hope, because I haven't looked at this area in the whole stream because it was, as far as I was aware, it was just ticking over nicely. There should be a plentiful supply of crushed Naquitite here. And we see there's, well, there's, there's like half a warehouse full. And there's also some, some data cards, but that's spoilers. We'll talk about that in, uh, in, in the next video. So when the ship arrives, I imagine... I'm assuming it's, it's just acid that we're having problems with. No, no, down here. Why, why are you stopped? Because you have too much crushed Naquitite. Trying... Oh, we seem to have had an excess of Iridium plate, and this is now ground to halt. It's all on. It's because it's all on the. Yeah, okay, so that would explain why this side has stopped because it's dumping onto the top side of the belt. But why is this one stopped? Oh no, this one's having problems because of an excess of water. So we've managed to fill up the water pipes down here somehow. So I guess I've got my numbers wrong down here. We've had this melting too much. and Because this is supposed to cut out when there's 100,000 water, and it, it has done. But somehow we've managed to produce an extra 100,000 water. I guess it must have all got turned into acid and then turned back again. So I suppose the fix for that is to put in another tank down here, if, if there is one out here, which there probably isn't. Stick a pipe in down there, and hopefully that'll be enough for it to kick back in again. Or alternatively, when, some more, um, when the more sulfur arrives, then we can start making acid again and we'll fill up this pipe and and uh, it'll fill up this tank up here. So there is room for another 120,000 fluid to go into, into the acid tank. Hmm. We, yes, I think we definitely need more of a water buffer down here because it looks like all the water gets turned into acid then the, uh, and then more water gets melted from ice over from, from here. Then the acid goes round, gets turned into na uh, into naquitite, and then as we crush it, that releases water, and then that water goes back into the system. I hope this isn't. I really hope this isn't a net positive. Um, I imagine it's not, and it's just that it's it's the acid has come back in the form of naquitite. So, we'll, um, but then that's been enough to fill this tank up completely. And so the system has ground to a halt because there's too much water and nowhere to put it. So that's that's awkward and problematic, and um, also kind of irrelevant because at the moment I'm trying to look at the system system over here. But that does mean when the spaceship arrives, it'll unload the sulfur, it'll make more acid, and then hopefully, and the amount of water will go down, so the machines will start running again. It'll fill the spaceship up. The system is probably going to recover from this all by itself. But I do feel that I do feel that we need to send another one of those tanks out there just to provide a little bit of extra buffer space in that system, and probably also reduce the amount of uh, water that we're trying to stockpile in that in, in that uh, uh, tank so that gets on anyway that gets unloaded here it goes into a train over here which will then which comes along here fills up with all of the crushed aquatite and then trundles down around here down the elevator down to Talos lovely 
we also have an additional spaceship here and this is the one that's bringing all of those million different things you can see over there all the different inputs that are required other than the crushed nacrotite over to Talos for the processing so those then get unloaded into the into the uh, uh, warehouse. As you can see, we've got some sulfur, we've got some plastic, rare metals, vulcanite, uh, methane ice, and then that gets put into a smaller train over here. And then I've got the normal setup along here, which is monitoring how many things there are on the belts to make sure to see if the belts are full. And if the belt is full, then we'll get an output of 32, as you're seeing there. And it says if the if, if you're getting an output of 32, then output a D. And then the ship looks at that and it says, okay, if I'm getting a D and inactivity, then it means that the train has, is not loading anything and the belts are full, which means the train is as full as it's going to get, and therefore can depart and also go down the elevator and when it goes down the elevator I've also been busy down here and I've built up all this area so over here we have the two stations the um, the, the na crushed nacrotite train can trundle in over here it'll unload all the crushed nacrotite and the methane ice which goes into the back wagon if necessary that all then comes out here as you can see the methane ice is being stockpiled in the, in this warehouse specifically and the idea in the long run will be that we will pull methane ice out of the train system over here it'll be passed along this belt and we'll use this one as a priority you can see a priority thing on there so that's going to get used up first but we'll also put a reader on here and a transmitter and send a signal out to stardust and say that if there's less than i don't know 10,000 uh, methane ice here then we'd like to bring some more over so we've always got a buffer here because in theory we are going to run out of this at some point because it's only being produced as a byproduct so we need to have a proper supply of it as well in order to keep the uh, system over here running when when that runs out and so that's what this one's for uh, I've also put in the, uh, I dropped in the blueprint that I made, you, you, you all saw this uh, last week. I have now made it and deployed it and placed it on, on Talos and built it all up. Well, built most of it up. I ran out of a few things because um, numbers and planning ahead are both hard. Uh, so I originally used up all of my, a load of my green belts and green loaders over here for emptying this train. And then I've had to drop these back down to blue because I needed all the green belts over here. I've also downgraded a number of these, like the, these belts here that are bringing the uh, the actual Naquium ingots out. I've downgraded to red because to be honest, blue was massive, massive overkill for those. But I've, um, yeah, so I've, I've downgraded those. Um, but I still want to bring out some more green, um, green, green loaders and green belts and upgrade all of this to, to be, to all of the train unloading to be green. And that means this will unload as quickly as possible, which means the train can go back up and get more of it. And hopefully the train will be able to do a complete loop before we then manage to pull all of this out down this one belt. Now the question is, will the, will the train doing that loop be faster than the, uh, the, the spaceship going off to go and get more of it? The answer is probably, um, but that's easily fixed by putting in more spaceships, so the, the system is, is expandable. I believe that this this belt here, and I, I think I talked about this last week as well, this belt here is one blue belt bringing the crushed nacrotide out and into the processing facility over here. And if we look out in Stardust, well, okay, there's two two uh, space belts here, but there's more, to the, more importantly, there's four... Uh, space belts, which are the same speed as blue belts, bringing the nacrotite ore in, and the crushing is a four to one. Well, technically it's an eight to two, but that's effectively a four to one. So four belts going in means one belt coming out. So that means the speed we're producing it here matches the speed we're using it up at the other end. So as long as these these trains can keep up and the spaceship can keep up, the processing is all at the same speed. It's just the logistics where we might need to add extra levels in. And so this kicked in. It started working, kind of. There were, uh, um, let's just say some mistakes were made, so um, I, I forgot a couple of the inputs. So uh, most of it, I brought, I brought most of the stuff that's needed over in the in the train system and in the in, in the uh, in, this, in the spaceship to here. And then I realized that actually I also need mineral water, and that's a problem because I haven't brought any of that over. Fortunately, we have a core processing system out on this planet, so I tapped into the mineral water that's being produced over here. Now previously that was just being vented off, so we've got quite a lot, we've potentially been, we've wasted an enormous amount. We can see over here, we've, we've, this machine has run almost 8,000 times, so that means we've presumably wasted about 800,000 mineral water because I didn't realise I was going to need it. Uh, so I felt a little bit silly about that. So we're going, we're going to see how it goes. We're going to try and run the Naquium processing off the mineral water that's coming from the core processing and see how far that gets us. If it doesn't do very well, Tristan did find me a couple of mineral water patches. They're down here. So we've got um, about 6 million mineral water available down here. And this is really close to the rail network. So I'll probably put in an additional system, uh, tra train station down here somewhere uh, that will and, and some mining drills on these on these mineral water patches. Pull all of that out and ship it over and use it as a, a lower priority than what's coming out of uh, coming out from over here. But I'll probably I suspect I'm probably going to need uh, need this mineral water as well. Uh, there isn't a lot of mineral water on this planet. There are I think there's another patch somewhere that's a million miles away. But this one is is going to be good enough to keep it, keep keep the system happy for quite a long time. I suspect with six million available. 
more upsettingly, I actually forgot the, um, the the Vitalic reagent as well because, and this is this is entirely my fault for doing for, for bad design, um, because I fed all of the ingredients in from the top, except for the Vitalic reagent, which I fed in from the bottom. And there was a there was method in my madness. The reason I did that is because the Vitalic reagent is recirculated by these um, by these centrifuges over here. So having it come round this way, and we're splitting off the various ingredients here, and then having the having the um, the vitalic reagent come out here and then be passed back in again, made a certain sense. But it also means that the main supply has to be brought in from the bottom. So essentially, I just need to I need to bring a belt in from up here, like uh, like this or something that comes down here and then goes across and feeds in like that or whatever something like that anyway to bring it in from the top and then i also need to bring it over from norvis because that's where it's all, all being supplied at the moment um so yeah that was a bit of that was a little bit of a fail but um yeah it's uh, it's, it's something that's going to be relatively easy to fix i think and oh yeah here comes some bots with some belt i'm surprised i've actually got this much blue belt left actually to be honest maybe i could upgrade some of this stuff or maybe it was the loaders that maybe it's the blue loaders i'd run out of i can't remember Anyway, that needs that needs fixing. The rest of it though is working pretty well. So with that, now we've got a little bit of the uh, the mineral water coming in. We've been able to start making lots and lots of the uh, the blue beads, and then that's allowed us to make the uh, the refined naquium. And over here, we've been able to make the naquium powder. Those are both been fed down into these chests, and these are filled up to a thousand, which well, a bit more than a thousand, which as you'll remember was the design intention that these were supposed to fill up to a thousand, and then and then and then these systems would stop because I don't want to unbalance it. Those are then fed around here. Now this is the stage that's stopped because we don't have any of the vitalic reagents, so these aren't running. But once we've got that in, this should should then be okay. And then all these furnaces over here, they should be able to start running as well. Um, as you can tell, I didn't bring enough uh, productivity modules over with me. I'm still short by about 70 of those, uh, which is slightly unfortunate. But they're being built over in Norbit, so I can get I can get some more of those when I send a spaceship back to go and restock on all the rest of the stuff I need. And then this will be all be brought up to speed. Uh, and that should be about it. I think things are more or less uh, are more or less right here. There are actually no, that's not quite true. There are a few other problems. So over here, we're bringing in the uh, the vitalic acid in in, in barrels, and then we're unbarreling it here and pumping it into, into a pipe. So we've got we've got some. That's fine. The problems we have here are twofold. One is that um, I brought I, I, basically I told the system to bring over two thousand of everything because that seemed seemed like a good starting point, and that means that we now have an obscene number of barrels, basically completely filling up this warehouse over here. So I think. Someone suggested, I think, I think it might have been Tristan, someone suggested that I put in a massive tank down here to store all of the vitalic acid in, in liquid form and then use the magic of maths to, uh, to tell this to only bring more barrels out when there's less than 2,000 barrels worth of, um, of vitalic acid available. So that's going to be relatively easy to fix. We've also got 2,800 in there, but that's due to the vagaries of the, uh, of the logistics system. That's sort of okay. I can deal with that. The other problem with this is that we then have a load of empty barrels coming out. So those are being shipped up here at the moment um, at, in, in, a, in a belt to nowhere. Because I'm not really sure what to do with them at this point. And the awkward thing is, I don't believe we need steel or barrels anywhere on this planet. Because well, one of the things we normally use barrels for is the in the core processing. So when, when we have the, uh, the oil and the pyroflux coming out of the core chunk processing, we go, okay, well, those are valuable things. We'll put them in barrels. We'll ship them back over to Norvis. Fine. The problem is... Over here, um, we actually, we're actually using those. So the oil is being turned into um, in, into sulfur up here to make sulfuric acid for the uh, for, for the uh, processing and for the uh, of the of the beryllium up here, and that's the thing that we currently have a bit of a shortage of. The pyroflux is also being taken away and used as part of the you guess it the beryllium processing, uh, where we're using it up here to melt it down into molten beryllium to make the ingots from it. So. Both of those are being used, so we're not shipping them out in barrels, therefore we don't have any use for the barrels, and there's nothing over here that's using steel for, well, anything at all. So we're just, we're just stockpiling them. I suspect what I might end up doing is crushing them and then chucking them in the disposal system just to get it taken away and got rid of somewhere down the line. Um, whether it's in the disposal system over here, which is fairly general purpose, or whether I just put it in with the Naquium ingots and, and have it disposed of there. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really sure exactly how to deal with this, because we don't have a great deal of demand for steel up in uh, Norbit, and I don't think we have a great deal of demand for steel plates over in on Norvis either, because it's mostly being turned into, it's mostly being supplied everywhere as steel ingots. So I'm not quite sure where we're going to send this to, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll come up with somewhere. It's a, it's a bit of a silly problem to have, and I'm sure, we'll, but I'm sure we'll be able to solve it. 
the other complication we have over here with this with this system is that we we need uh, beryllium hydroxide as one of the input steps. And this is your you may remember was one of the reasons I decided to do the uh, do the production on of the Naquium on on Talos rather than any of the other planets. And an additional reason was pointed out to me as well. So. The first reason, my original reason, was because this is where this is the uh, the only one that's required as a liquid that we didn't already have in barrels, because the the vitalic acid we already had in barrels, because we're shipping that off to various places. But this was one we we did we didn't have in barrels and didn't have any sort of convenient system for transporting it yet. So I thought, okay, fine, we'll do it on Talos. It has also come to my attention that another excellent reason to do this on Talos is because this is the only one that passes forwards in the production chain. So, for example, with the uh, with the iridium that's being uh, pr that's required out on uh, Stardust, the iridium goes through the system here and it comes out as iridium powder sometimes, and the iridium powder can then be cooked down again into more iridium, into iridium ingots that can then be turned into iridium plates. So it goes, it's, it's, it's easy to just take take it those extra couple of steps forwards and pass it back in, round into the system. Similarly, the holmium producing step, produced down here, we're producing a small amount of holmium powder, and the holmium powder, I haven't done this yet, but can be relatively easily cooked back into holmium, and then, to, and then combined with plastic in order to make more of the holmium cables that go into this step. So, those two can both be reprocessed fairly easily. The beryllium one, on the other hand, it takes in a relatively early stage of beryllium that is produced from the beryllium ore. The beryllium hydroxide comes from beryllium ore with over a couple of steps, and it produces beryllium powder, which can then be cooked into beryllium ingots, which we don't need here and we'd have to ship off. So this would mean if we did this anywhere else, rather than just shipping in holmium cables or iridium ingots, which we're doing for the other steps, we'd have to ship in the beryllium hydroxide and then ship out the beryllium powder or cook it into beryllium ingots and ship those out. So we'd have an extra extra step required there. But instead, over here, we can make things a little bit easier. We've got the uh, the beryllium hydroxide coming in, which is produced... Uh, there's some very, very long pipe runs over here. You can you can see them all on the, on the map. There's a bit of a mess of these. But that's being produced over here from the beryllium ore that comes out of the core processing. So that goes into, into a machine here. It's, um, it's then cooked down into beryllium hydroxide, which we then pump off down this way to go over to the naquium processing. And then the beryllium powder comes up along this belt from way down here and is fed into the beryllium cooking system up here, which will then turn it into beryllium ingots, which will then just go into our normal beryllium supply. So as long as we're using at least a little bit of beryllium, this whole system is going to be wonderfully self-contained and should just and, and should just uh, uh, keep keep everything working nicely. And I've also very, very deliberately fed this from the uh, core processing system over here, and as a priority, because it's the first bit on the output here, because that's the one that's free and unlimited, and also because it's taking it first, it should we shouldn't ever have any problems with supply here. As long as we don't get a complete complete backlog of core chunks, which I don't think we can, uh, we should always be absolutely fine with this system. I do need to put some productivity modules in these though, just on general principles. <laughs> Another weird problem we had over here was with water. So the Naquin processing uses a certain amount of water. We need to make steam in order to make the, uh, the, the both types of beads, and water is required in one of the uh, in one of the processing re recipes over here. It also produces a little bit, but it is a net water negative or a net water consumer in that it uses up more water than it produces. So that's fine. You think I thought, okay, that's that's not a problem. I'll just link it in with this with this long long water pipe and tap off the water water system over here for the beryllium. I'm sure that'll be fine. What could possibly go wrong? Well. It turns out some things can go wrong with that uh, that general idea because this whole um, beryllium processing system here was actually water positive and so when you're making beryllium it actually produces slightly more water than it uses up and I think that's actually because part of, because you're bringing in sulfuric acid as well if you include the making of the sulfuric acid that's not actually true but all of, but this system over here wasn't actually bringing in any water from outside we had a tank over here uh, that had has some water in it, as you can see, and then there was a pump here that was set to to, uh, to remove it when it got got up to a certain amount, and then pa and then pass that back into other water systems. And then over here, we had a system that was bringing in water to, in order to grow the wood, um, and also a little bit of it was coming out of the uh, the, the core processing. Uh, and those were completely separate. There was no water being passed. Well, there was no water being passed from here over to this side. So when I tapped into this supply here and started pulling it out for Naquium, we very very quickly ran out. And I went, oh, that's weird. And so I then thought, okay, well, that means I can then tap into the water supply over here if I find out if I find out where that's coming from. I can I can pull a little bit through from there, and that's sort of true. The problem is, and I haven't fixed this yet, so this is still a bit 
hideous is the water for this is coming it's coming out of this uh, this this little puddle over here which is is fine because of factorio physics and how water works in this game uh, so we've got these various pumps pulling it out of here and it goes into the into these tanks as a, as a byproduct as a stopgap and then it's all passed down this duct over here which is great uh, passing it down to here and then oh the duct ends and it turns out the water is being put into these greenhouses here where it's being used to grow wood which we're using to, in order to produce the fuel for the trains fine um, and then there's a pipe coming out of there that goes into, into the system over here in order to produce the wood that we needed for the uh, for the charcoal in order to make steel over here that's also fine but that's basically where all of the water for this area is coming from so I then tapped out from that and it was in theory then pulling water through it's pulling water through these greenhouses then back down through this system and then off over this way to go over to the Naquian processing and that's kind of weird it was even worse because one of these underground pipes was missing, so I essentially just slurped up all the water out of these greenhouses and then ran out again. So I then had to find where the problem with that was. It was, it was all a little bit silly. So this does mean that the, the all the Naquitite processing is pulling water through, literally through these greenhouses, which is a little bit silly. And one thing I would quite like to do is extend this ducting here and bring it all the way over to the, to the Naquian processing area. The problem with that is that there's a warehouse in the way, um, so what I think I'll probably end up doing is removing this T and this and this uh, exhaust here, and then running the um, running the ducting through more through over here. I'll get it round round through here somehow, and then have another exhaust system over here just to make sure that we've got a good flow throwing, flowing through. Because at the moment, it, it it feels a bit wrong, and also a lot of this is not required. I can also pull up quite a lot of the stuff around here because a lot of this is for making delivery cannon capsules and we're not using those anymore as you've seen. We've upgraded to much, much better systems like, you know, spaceships and elevators. So I'll kind of want to get, it would be nice to tidy up and get rid of some of this. So this oil processing down here, um, actually that might be neat. No, that probably isn't needed. Um, I don't know why there's even heavy oil being even, being even considered down here. Uh, oh, that's for coal liquefaction, that's why. Um, you could leave that in. But we don't need the steel pro production here, we don't need the low density structures, we don't need the copper, we don't need any of this, we don't need these. There's lots of stuff around here that just straight up isn't needed anymore, so it'd be quite nice to get rid of some of that and just tidy the area up a bit. So I mentioned that acid was a bit of a problem, and you can see down here these acid machines don't have any sulphur being brought into them. And that's because when they, when, when we're using beryllium up, in fact, if I, if, I, if I send this train off, just say, get lost, go, go, go and do your thing. The train will then come back down again with a load of resources that we require, uh, specifically the sulphur. And so the sulphur gets unloaded, it goes through the system here, and we start to have sulphur coming out down this belt. Eventually it'll make it all the way over to here, and it will start producing acid, and then we can start processing the beryllium. So as long as the beryllium is being used up and the system is just generally running, then this is okay. But it wasn't, because we had more beryllium than we knew what to do with. And that meant that none of these machines were running, and that meant we weren't getting the beryllium hydroxide coming out. So I ended up tapping off a supply, or tapping off the acid supply that's being made for the uh, Naquium processing down here, where we're making we're making some acid in order to do oh goodness knows what. Um, it, this, this stage apparently requires requires sulfuric acid. So I've, been, I've I've tapped off the tank here, and I'm pulling it through this way all the way along this long pipe, and that's being used specifically and exclusively here by this machine you see the, the pipe, pipe comes in here but it doesn't pass over and it doesn't mix with this pipe so we're making so we are we will use this one um in fact I, what i what i could do is is that and bring that over to here and then this machine can run off either of them um but this but the, but only only this one will run off the supply coming from the naquian processing anyway that's that's sort of irrelevant but it but it doesn't mean but it means that we need to, i needed to bring over acid somehow in order to get the beryllium hydroxide through in order to do that stage of the processing and now, as you can see, yeah, okay, the sulfur has nearly made it all the way through to the uh, to, to the machines that are going to make the acid. Uh, and when it finally does, we can then get a little bit of a dri dribble of it through, and all of the beryllium machines can then kick in and start actually, you know, producing beryllium as we want them to. Um, and that's me. And, and when that when it's when it's running nicely like this, the whole system works and everything and every, everything's a bit smoother. But because we've not needed significant amounts of beryllium for quite a long time we've just not been getting through the uh we've not been produced bringing the sulfur down and therefore not been making acid and therefore this step had stalled and that was causing some minor issues 
over at the other end in Norbit, I had to set up a new uh, a new spaceship landing area. So this is this is one for Talos Nequium. Uh, as you can see, it's pulled it pulled up here. It has um, pulled in a small amount of sulfur and then not departed. And I'm not sure why. This ship is not finished yet. There is there is more more fiddling required on this. Oh, I know why it's not departed. It's not got it's not actually got everything it expects to need. Uh, more fiddling is required with this ship. It's not running auto fully automatedly yet. I'm having to do, I'm having to tell it to leave at least leave Talos uh, manually e each time. But this is bringing in, as you can see down here, a million and one different things. We've got uh, the holmium cables we need, the iron, the vitalic acid, the methane ice, plastic, vulcanite, cryonite, rare metals, sulfur. And then over here, we've also, in theory, got vitalic reagent being passed through. But there's a shortage of that at the moment. We have a... We have a well, oh, no, we just haven't put the belts in properly. And that's because I needed to add in some extra things for some of these ingredients. So the uh, the iron and the uh, and the holmium cable both need to be brought up from Norbit, Norvis. So we've got these really long belts running over here. We've got a supply of those. They're brought up by the miscellaneous, all of the stuff you could possibly need to train over here, which as you can see is unloading plastic and sulfur mostly at the moment. And that's filling up the belts down here. We, we, need, we, we have lots and lots of places that require both of those. So those are brought in. That, that's fine. And then also I put in additional belts because I needed the vitalic acid and the vitalic reagent and so those there's no point in bringing that I can't bring those up from Norvis because they're not being taken down there at the moment so I've tapped into the warehouses over here with the where the big so the big grid ship comes in lands here unloads into these warehouses so tapping out of those um, and that means in theory well you, you can see it's kind of working we have a nice healthy supply of the reagent we've run out of the um, the acid barrels at the moment that's not too serious a problem but it's it is, is a thing we need to keep an eye on uh, one of the things I did need to do because uh, Mark has been doing the uh, the count everything in and count everything out system on this um, Oh, and I need to link up that, that inserter because I haven't yet, haven't finished this yet. Um, we, we, I've had to link in all of these inserters into the circuit network here. As these items are taken out and put onto the belt to be taken away, they'll be counted out of the Vita logistics system. Because everything in the Vitus system is counted in at Big Rid and then counted out at this end to make sure that we always have the right amount in the system. Uh, rather than... Because there's so many different things here, Mark didn't want to do the standard, well, let's just make sure there's always at least a certain amount in the warehouses because there's so many different things it would fill up and overflow and cause problems. So instead, he's using a memory cell over here, which is watching how many are in there, and then each time something gets put in here, the, the, we get a pulse from, the, from these belts, and that counts it in, and then when it gets taken out by an inserter at the other end, it's counted back out again. Uh, and so in theory, this means that we always know that there are 30,000 uh, vitalic extra extract, 13,000 uh, core chunks, 12,000 reagents, and so on somewhere in the system and we can fiddle with these numbers somewhere if we want to as well but the idea is that we always know how much is it in, in the system it's counted in counted out so it doesn't matter whether it's in a train in a warehouse in a spaceship doesn't matter wherever it is we know about it and so it'd be counted counted through uh, the problem is if some ha ham-handed idiot like myself comes along and starts taking things out of the system then it breaks the counts and things can fall apart very very quickly and easily and it's possible that's happened with the uh, with, with the acid barrels I'm not hundred percent certain um, <clears throat> some funny th funny things happened and uh, it, it may be it may be broken although that said up here there is yeah, there's about 750 barrels in here. There should be a lot more than that. Something has gone wrong somewhere and may need a bit of debugging or just numbers increasing until it until it works. And I don't like just increasing numbers unless I'm absolutely sure I've found the area that is the problem. However, as long as it keeps working, we will then have a supply of vitalic acid and a vitalic reagent. They can be passed down here and they can go into the, into the, into the ship here and things should work properly. Uh, we, just need to, we just need to make sure, keep an eye on it, make sure everything's going, going happily. I think that is all I have to say about Naquium. So I think this is probably quite a good place to draw the line under this episode and, uh, and, and move on for the next one. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, we'll, be, we'll be back on Monday with the uh, the other half of this video where I shall talk about what everyone else has been doing and one or two other little things I've been doing. But most mostly about the others because, uh, well, they've, they've been off doing exciting stone-related and, and, uh, and probe-related stuff as well. So there's uh, there is lots more to say about, about, about uh, their shenaniganry as well. I shall be back on Tuesday with another stream where I shall be carrying on with... Uh, playing satisfactory um i have some ideas about wanting to do massive rebuilds but i think i've been advised that maybe i should hold off a little bit longer on those we'll see how that goes then on wednesday there'll be a video coming out talking about the differences between the various different interplanetary logistics systems whether that's uh, spaceships rockets delivery cannons arco link storage all of those going into the pros and cons of each of them and um, and talking about those this is an update for a video that came out about a year ago uh, well where i'm now talking about 0.6 and the and the addition of space elevators which make quite a big difference and i think some of the recipes have changed as well so that's coming out on wednesday and then on thursday will be the next uh, k2se stream where i should be carrying on with all of this and hopefully 
fingers crossed, and I know I said this last week, fingers crossed we'll actually have some Naquin being made next week. <laughs> there aren't too many more problems in the way. I mean, there's, there's, I'm sure there's going to be a few hiccups that need to be ironed out, but we're very nearly there with at least being able to produce the first couple of pieces of it. So we shall see how that goes. So I hope to see you for all of that. Uh, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on anything. And I shall see you next time. Thanks for watching and goodbye.